Every day we use stuff we don't really understand. Like perhaps you're not entirely sure how this video was made. Or how this car gets me from A to B. And sometimes we use things that no one in the entire world understands. This happens all the time. Take controlled fire for example. These fine men didn't exactly know what fire was, but they used it every day for their warmth, cooking and protection. Or take the brewing of beer. For thousands of years they weren't exactly sure why beer made them feel this way, they just knew that it did. And it still happens today. Take for example lithium batteries. Although used in our laptops and our phones and now in our new fancy electric cars, not everyone understands exactly how they work. But here at the Max Planck Institute, we're doing research that requires to understand them inside and out. <laughs> Lithium is the lightest of all metals and has a very high chemical potential. This rare combination of light weight and high reactivity makes it the perfect choice for batteries that are on the go. So let's hold them still for a closer look. Dominic studies lithium batteries. He makes his own batteries here in the lab and he'll be making one right now so we can see some of the problems that come up. When we make a battery, the first step is to uh, prepare a slurry. For doing so, we start by adding our choice of active material. In this case, we use lithium iron phosphate. This stuff has a very low chemical potential, meaning in our setup, it attracts the electrons. To help the electrons to get to every single particle of the battery, we add some conductive carbon where the electrons can travel through. Dominic has just created one side of the battery, the cathode, where the electrons want to get to. On the other side is the anode, our lithium foil, whose extremely high chemical potential forces both its electrons and lithium ions to leave and cross to the other side. This lithium foil is very reactive, reacting with water and even with air. So when we add the lithium to our batteries, we have to do so in a glove box filled with stable argon gas. The battery is almost complete, just adding a liquid called the electrolyte and a small thin separator. These two together will let the lithium ions go through but block any electrons, which is good as the electrons will be forced to go through a wire and create electricity for us. So now we've got to charge our battery, forcing even more electrons and lithium ions from the cathode into the anode. We've got dozens of batteries here, all of them being slightly different. So one of the problems that we've encountered during building batteries is that we can only fit 30 to 50% of active material into the uh, electrode of such a battery. But recently we found a simple solution to this problem, which we are really excited about. We're replacing carbon with carbon fibers and we embed the active material particles inside these fibers. Now we can change that 30% up to 60 or even 70% of the active material. And not only that, but every time these tiny fibers touch each other, they become more and more connected and more and more conductive. This way the electrons can travel very, very easily to the active material, leading to much more efficient batteries. The science that will improve lithium batteries is one important step along the road to a more sustainable and greener world. It's progress that may not be seen overnight, but perhaps after taking a notable flash, into our future.